start just by generally asking what today's announcement meant to you, both in the commitment from the club and the crafts, along with the fact that the first beneficiary was Black Players for Change. Yeah, no, it's it's been a um, extremely gratifying process. Um, at previous clubs, I've tried to do certain things to try to address issues of uh, systemic racism, and uh, since I've been here, the support uh, in, in that regard has been tremendous, and uh, for the crafts to uh, come up with such a fund on their own and then collaborate with myself and fellow players um, and, and make uh, a commitment to this degree is um, something I'm extremely grateful for, uh, and then obviously to be a member of BPC and have that come to our organization to start off with is something that I know will go a long way. Um, we're going to do our best to make sure it goes uh, into uh, you know the many pitches that we've been building and uh, provide kids with access that they haven't had before and uh, continue to affect change in our league and in our, our societies throughout the throughout the country. And that's going to Seth McCumber from SB Nation. You talked about the black players of change. Uh, can you just reflect upon the past year and, and talk about what uh, changes have been made and what you're most proud of uh, being part of that organization? Yeah, I think there's been, uh, we've been able to accomplish a lot in the last year. Um, again, the process has been really gratifying. I think some of our biggest uh, steps that we've taken and uh, that are tangible would be uh, getting a DE and I hire um, on the league side, Shola Winley. Um, and then we've had uh, three players now step up on the executive board of the uh, Players Association as well. So um, to get that representation at levels that we haven't had before, um, you know, there's a lot of things that have been done in terms of wearing shirts, uh, Instagram posts, tweeting different things and using our platforms, but to have things that are tangible where we have people in positions to make real decisions that will affect this league, change this league and, and the outlook for um, people of color uh, moving forward, I think is going to, um, we're going to reap a lot of benefits from it. Next, we Tom Clements from WPRF. Hey, Earl, nice to meet you. Uh, so when we, you know, talk about systemic racism, when we talk about addressing issues uh, of inequality, you know, mental health is, you know, sort of part of the issues that, you know, I've heard a lot about in the last year. So I'm just curious with everything that happened with Simone Biles this week, you know, does it resonate with you more? And do you think, you know, this is a launching point for addressing, you know, some of the mental health issues in communities of color? Yeah, no, I think that's a great point and uh, a point that I've made a, a quite a bit in terms of what I personally have gained most from being a member of the BPC is uh, uh, we meet weekly um, as board members. And prior to that, we were having, uh, especially when we first established ourselves around the Orlando uh, bubble, there was a lot of things we had uh, to execute on while we were there. And um, the, uh, the meeting every week and, and talking through some of the things we face as black people in this country was uh, extremely therapeutic and is something, um, as a black community, you know, there's a lot of hardships and uh, we're taught from a young age to somewhat understand that this is life in America and uh, we bottle thing those things up and uh, we're meant to uh, you, you just kind of deal with those things and operate and be expected to operate at a high level uh, professionally and, and whatever our professions are, um, while we do see uh, incidents of George Floyd, uh, Jacob Blake, uh, and things of the sort, so it's um, it's been a uh, definitely a transition into people being more aware in regards to mental health. Um, and, and for me, again, to be able to open up with uh, my fellow peers throughout the league and talk about some of the things that we experience has been extremely uh, therapeutic, and I think something that. Um, is a step in the right direction in terms of mental health for us as, as black men. And uh, in regards to Simone Biles, I've, I've had, I've put a lot of thought into that. I've been asked about it a lot in the last few days. Um, and uh, she made a point recently that I think uh, really resonated with me. Um, actually, I don't even know if it was her specifically, but um, the amount of people that are talking about what she did um, the amount of people that are taught now talking about mental health uh, specifically in regards to what she did. Um, you know, for me, uh, the, the comment of like, had she just gone out and won a gold medal, I think her outreach in, in terms of what she accomplished is going to go uh, significantly further than had she just gone out and won a gold medal. So um, hats off to her being the greatest uh, gymnast of all time and all of the uh, accolades she's uh, achieved on the sports side of things to be able to do this and now raise awareness of 
in, in regards to mental health, um, you know, I, I think she's championing a whole nother realm that uh, she'll slowly and, and, and uh, more so, I think, start to uh, ease into. And I think she's a tremendous uh, athlete, but more importantly, tremendous human being. Yeah, we'll take three more questions for Earl. First, we're going to Elizabeth Pahoda, then we'll go to Seth, and we'll wrap up with a follow up from Jeff. Elizabeth, go ahead. Earl, as a, a champion for change, a, a board member, and a co founder, what does it mean to you to see players stepping up? And also, what were your emotions when this initiative came to fruition? Um, it, it means a lot to see players stepping up. I mean, I'm in, in across the board, there's different levels of. Uh, uh, how guys want to participate when it comes to these type of matters. Uh, I'm one that tends to be all in and trying to push the needle as aggressively as possible um, and to have support of fellow teammates and players across the league. It, it, it speaks volumes and uh, to see this whole thing come to fruition is pretty incredible. You know, the, to uh, make this uh, specifically a financial contribution of this magnitude um, uh, to collaborate on it with players and, and making sure it's going to uh, directly into the community to affect real change. And uh, I want to give Josh Kraft a lot of credit. He was very uh, specific on that, that he didn't want things going to administrative type stuff and he wanted to touch communities and make genuine uh, change where uh, me, for me specifically, I, I'm, I put a tremendous emphasis on education and youth and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that that money have an impact on our local communities. Next word to Seth. Do you find that um, people are more willing to talk about race in the locker rooms? You've been around the league for a long time. Are there conversations that are happening now that you d did never imagine happening uh, when you first started in the league? Uh, yes and no. Uh, so uh, that's probably the thing I'm most passionate about, uh, dialogue. Uh, anytime I can be in a setting like this, a Q&A setting, uh, you know, people like to, as I, I really can't stand and try to shift this idea of having these uncomfortable conversations, uh, you know, even, even starting things like that doesn't sound like something that most people would want to participate in. So um, I do my best when topics of race do come up uh, to really try to have a conversation in the locker room, whether it's just in passing, someone talking about uh, – maybe not race related, but I do think some of the judgment she's getting in Simone Biles has been race related. Uh, but when certain topics do come up, uh, I encourage guys to have those conversations. I, I like to chime in and more so from the standpoint of like, uh, there's a part of it that I, I see as humanizing us as black men. Um, and then another part of just like trying to make more, uh, trying to p make people more comfortable having those conversations. Cause uh, you know, if you're afraid to say something wrong or offend somebody, um, it's really hard to put yourself out there and, and learn and grow. Um, so I try to make it really clear to guys in the locker room, like, look, you, you, it's, it, I'm, it's really hard to offend me in general. Um, so if that's what's holding guys back, I try to make it really clear that, look, have these conversations with me, uh, push the boundaries. I, I'm open to educating guys um, and letting them know kind of where we come, come from as black people. And then... Um, you know, again, educating them on the plight of, of the black experience. So uh, I, it's, a, it's still a touchy subject. Um, I think it's hard for anybody to just dive into a, a conversation about race without feeling like it could go one way or another. But uh, I've definitely seen it more and more in our locker room and locker rooms I've been in the past and just trying to make guys more comfortable with having those conversations because it's the only way we could really uh, learn and grow and, and improve the experience of black people in the country. All right, for our last question, we'll go back to Jess. Bro, you mentioned these funds are obviously going to directly help local organizations, but how important is also a potential knock-on effect where clubs are kind of out at the forefront starting these types of initiatives uh, and it potentially leads to more action in more areas across the league? Uh, it's extremely important. I, I made that point to... Uh, Brian Bellello and uh, the Crafts when I got the chance, you know, to be a club, again, at, at previous organizations I was at, I, I tried to make it clear, like, to be a pioneer in this field or in, in this sector is, is something you want to be doing, and uh, to be so uh, aggressive in doing so, uh, I, again, I give the Crafts tremendous credit, and I do believe that uh, they will be um, on the right side of history with this type of stuff and, and a trendsetter, so to speak. And 
Um, I genuinely believe, genuinely believe that when uh, an ownership group takes such a drastic step that it, it puts the pressure on uh, other owners across the league to follow suit or do the same or do something uh, similar. Uh, and I'm, I'm really hoping that that's the case here and that it's something that our league needs to, um, or our ownership and, and people that have the resources to do so, uh, really try to step forward and impact change in any way they can. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.